You know those times where the weather outside affects your productivity to the point where you have no drive to do anything? That's how I felt today. Yesterday, I was dead set on reviewing, like making an official review of the last two chapters of Naruto. I got home really late and I wasn't able to do anything. And then today, I woke up and I was like, yes, I'm going to do it today. And then I looked outside. And it's like 2.30, 3 o'clock right now, and it looks like it's 7. It's just dark and gloomy, and all day it's just been like that, and I have had no drive to do this. And it really does seem like a manifestation of my soul when I think about what I've lost. I've lost the show that... A quick little backstory for you. Uh, Naruto was the first anime that I ever saw that I was conscious of the fact that it was anime. You know what I mean? Like, I'd seen Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon and Digimon, Beyblade, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Yu Hakusho, Roni Kenshin, I saw all of those, and I was like seven, eight, nine, and I just, I didn't really know that it was from Japan, and that, like, it had to be shipped over here, and dubbed, and I didn't know any of that, and then I saw Naruto, like, last year of elementary, first year of middle school, so I was like 10 or 11, and by that point, I, I loved the show, right, they were just doing the tuning exams on Toonami, and I was like, and then I researched it because we finally had internet. You know, not the crappy dial-up where you have to go, <coughs> and then your mom's yelling at you, Turn off the internet, I need to call somebody. Remember those when it was still like landlines and shit? Oh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Naruto was the first series where I genuinely understood this is anime. It is uh, poignantly different from Spongebob. It is very different. And it was this show in particular, and the manga I started reading later, that really got me into anime, and then I ended up watching like 60, 70 anime in a year's time, just like <laughs> titles, titles everywhere. Just <laughs> uh, And then I got Netflix, and then <laughs> I became a couch potato. But Naruto had a distinct impact on my life. It was the longest running anime that I'd ever seen straight, that I had just been following. I'd seen Dragon Ball Z, but it had already finished long before I started watching it. This was the one where it's like, it's ongoing. Every week I have something to do, something to look forward to. And now it's, now it's over. So with that in mind, I'm going to quickly do a recap of the last two episodes and then give my thoughts. And I'll also be doing a arc by arc discussion series that's going to be maybe seven or eight videos long, you know, land of waves, tune in exams, that sort of thing. Just breaking down the series and I'll be excluding filler because fuck filler. And I just want to focus on the story uh, and give my sincere thoughts because even though I love Naruto, I, I love it to bits. It's not a perfect series and I do feel that if I'm going to call myself a reviewer, I need to be honest about it. I can't let personal feelings get in the way. I can talk about my feelings about it, but if I'm going to judge the anime based on, you know, the content, I have to be objective about it. So that's something that you guys can look forward to. Anyway, let's get to the chapter. So chapter 699 is the official end of the Naruto series, with chapter 700 being the epilogue. It kind of wraps things up with a pretty little bow, lets you know that everything worked out for the best. So don't worry, you guys, and um, on a quick side note, before I actually get into the chapter itself, um, Kishimoto and I, I think a couple of news medias have announced that there's going to be a, a very short spin-off series that's going to revolve around the children of the uh, Konoha 12 or Konoha 11, I don't know what they want to call them now that Neji's gone, Sai kind of replaced Neji, I guess, and Sasuke's off doing his... <laughs> but um, that's going to happen spring of... 2015. So that's something to look forward to. Hopefully it'll be good. Chapter 699 starts with two beautiful color pages. One where we zoom out and we see that Naruto and Sasuke are passed out on the broken conjoined fingers of the statues of Madara and Hashirama. And then picture from above of the still standing statues with Naruto and Sasuke superimposed. And instead of them doing jutsu, they're shaking fingers. So that was nice. After like a day and a half of slow and steady following, Sakura and Kakashi finally find Sasuke and Naruto passed out. 
And Sakura does what she can do, the only thing she knows how to do, and that's heal them. For the first time in, like, forever, Sasuke apologizes to Sakura for everything that he's done. Kakashi has a quick flashback of the first time he ever met them, and that was when he walked into the classroom and Naruto dropped the uh, eraser thing on his head. And he doesn't have the Sharingan anymore, and yet he pulls down the headband over his eye. And that, to me, indicates he's probably crying from nostalgia. And what's interesting is that while for the longest time the story has been told from Naruto's perspective, he's the one narrating, or he's the one, every time you have the the uh, enclosed thought bubbles, it's Naruto thinking, this chapter is entirely Sasuke. It's him reflecting on the events of the story and coming to terms with his own feelings. He now understands Naruto. He understands his own feelings. Sasuke is very, very aware that his actions were not the best. He knows that his behavior pushed all of the people that cared about him away. So any chance that he had after losing his family of having people care about him, he forced them away. So he's very, very reflective of that fact. Meanwhile, they're dispelling the infant Sukuyomi, and we see everybody who is trapped popping out everywhere. The last person that we see is Yamato, who is breaking out of White Zetsu, and White Zetsu is like, uh, and then breaks apart. After everybody's released, including Kurama out of the Chibaku Tensei, all the people in Konoha go to pay their respect to the fallen, and we see everybody weeping over Neji's grave, and um, I didn't really feel the impact of that during the live reaction. Um, I actually reread the chapter later, and it actually hit me that, yes, one of the people, one of the uh, rookies, or Konoha 12, is gone. And he's not coming back. And that's actually really sad, considering that, you know, the series is over and there's one less of our little babies. They're, they're gone. He's gone. He's not coming back. Kakashi is made the sixth Hokage, and through a bit of legislation and intercession between him and Naruto, they managed to make sure that Sasuke is not arrested and imprisoned for life. And Sasuke goes on a trip of self-reflection and self-discovery. Uh, he has a couple of questions that need answering. Uh, he needs to come to terms with who he is and his new role. Sakura tells him to wait at least long enough to get the new arm that Tsunade is making for him and that she would want to come with him. And Sasuke says, I can't let you. I, this is my journey. I have to do this on my own. But then in the most tender moment I've ever seen Sasuke at any point in the series, he full-on Itachi pokes her in the forehead and tells her, I'll see you when I come back and thank you. And that made the chapter for me. That, along with the following. Naruto goes out to meet Sasuke and gives him back the headband that Sasuke has not worn in all of Shippuden. And Sasuke accepts it and says, I'll treasure this until we meet again. And that actually got me choked up when I first read it. And it still gets me a little bit. The fact that this chapter is told entirely from Sasuke's perspective is an interesting and refreshing change of pace. Um, especially considering that this entire, like, all of Shippuden has been revolving around Naruto getting Sasuke back. And not only is he back, they're not just on speaking terms, they're on good terms, good friendly terms. Uh, Sasuke, his entire demeanor has changed. He's still somber and he's still very serious, but he's kind and almost joking around with people. He's willing to, uh, to show kindness to Sakura and to Naruto, and I don't know, it, it really hit home just how much things have changed for all of the characters, uh, especially the two main male leads, Naruto and Sasuke. The symbolism everywhere in this chapter, just crap tons of symbolism. Just It is, for the most part, a very happy ending, but this isn't the ending ending. This is the ending of Naruto's story when they're still teenagers. The epilogue covers them when they're like 25, 30. This is like years in the future. So I'll get to that video in a moment.